today. I depended more on cocaine than I did on food to live. And he took his sons with him to score. He always got me and my brother to ride with him. A cokehead daddy finds the cure next on Canadian Edition. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Canadian Edition. I'm David Geertz, and thank you for joining us for today's program. During these weeks uh, leading up to Easter, here as we're coming to the end of March, we want to continue to focus on God's precious promises. Uh, some of us have uh, promise boxes in our homes with scripture verses, and I grew up with a promise box at our dinner table. And each night we would draw a promise that would be something we would sleep on and appropriate for the next day. Here's the precious promise for you today and for our program today. It's found in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 20. Listen to this. For the Lord will be your everlasting light. And here's the promise. And the days of your mourning shall be ended. I don't know how that verse is going to relate to you today. Uh, it's quite possible we're talking to some people that are in deep grief You've just lost a loved one. Something's happened in your family relationship that was totally unexpected. Perhaps uh, there's an awful diagnosis that's just come. You've got this sense of a day of mourning, but here's the promise. God says, I will be your everlasting light, and your mourning shall be ended. It shall break forth like noontime, the scripture says, in terms of your faith in Jesus Christ this day. We want to rejoice with you, and we want to stand with you to see the fulfillment of this promise in your life this day. And if you'll call us at 877-431-7887 and 416-431-0700, we'd be happy to pray with you, privileged to do so, and help you appropriate this precious promise for your life at this moment, this day, for God's eternal glory. So give us a call. Well, it's no secret that marriage in North America, uh, that marriages in North America are in deep trouble. According to the Department of Justice, the divorce rate in Canada has climbed now to 48 percent. Hoping to reverse this alarming trend, two Christian leaders in a small town in the U.S. decided to find ways to help couples stay together and build stronger families. As Paul Strand reports, they've succeeded. Like most places, the divorce rate in Kansas City, Missouri has been going up. But right across the state line here in Kansas City, Kansas, it's been going down. What's made the difference? In 1996, suburban pastor Jeff Myers teamed up with urban pastor Leroy Sullivan to fight for marriage. If it fails, it's the pebble in the pond, the waves that reverberate out go on for generations. And I thought, where's the church? This is our issue. This is the thing we should be dealing with. And we're so busy talking about let's go to heaven, we never teach people how to live on earth. Myers and Sullivan spent months recruiting dozens of other pastors in the Kansas City, Kansas area to sign a community marriage policy, a pledge to fight hard to make marriages last. And over the next 10 years, the town saw an amazing 70% plunge in the divorce rate, from 650 in 1995 to just 196 in 2005. One method focused on recruiting and training couples with long-lasting marriages to become mentors, working especially with those about to marry. The DeFreeses have mentored for 14 years. You're using your years of experience um, coupled with some training and listening skills and communication skills. The Llewellyns have mentored a dozen young couples. How, how well do you know each other and are you really meant to be together? Just because you love each other, it doesn't mean you're called to be lifetime partners. These marriage coaches help couples who want to wed take a premarital inventory, which can predict with 80 percent accuracy which couples will likely divorce. We've had, I know, two mm -hmm. um, decide not to marry. And mentors help young couples seriously consider areas of potential trouble. The preparation process lots of times brings out areas that maybe they've never discussed before or thought about. Well, you have the communication tools to give and take and, and find, you know, how you're going to work together. Pastors in more than 220 communities have now signed community marriage policies, offering pre-marriage exams and mentoring couples. Mike McManus of Marriage Savers has championed these concepts for decades. Now he's pushing more ideas in how to cut America's divorce rate in half. The U.S. rate is triple that of France and Britain, and McManus thinks one big reason is because of the waiting periods for a divorce in those nations. You have to wait five years and one 
country and six years in the other to get the divorce. You know what happens in five years? A lot of reconciliation. Meyer says research shows if those in a failing marriage would simply wait it out for five years, they'd likely see a big turnaround. 66% of those couples will report a stronger, happier, uh, wholesome marriage. I really believe in what we're doing is making eternal benefits to couples down the road. Marriage is really the best solution for all the problems we have in our society today. Sullivan's only had a couple of divorces in his church since his fellow pastors banded together in 1996. And as for Meyer's church, I have uh, roughly 100 uh, weddings that I've performed since then. I've had no divorces. If we have a culture promoting marriage and our churches begin to um, catch, capture the vision that they can be marriage savers, uh, I think we could drive down this divorce rate nationally in half. You know, what's so exciting is that this simple idea has grown into a, a national and international movement. Marriage Savers has grown into a ministry that's helped thousands of marriage in the United States and Canada and throughout the world basically have their marriages saved through Marriage Encounter Weekends. And we want you to know that God is concerned about your marriage relationship. Perhaps the darkness I was sensing as we started the, the show today is a darkness that's come out of the reality that your marriage isn't one that's working. Uh, that your marriage is in trouble. And we want you to know that God is concerned about the relationship between you and your spouse. He wants you to be reconciled to one another, but the first step is for each of you individually to be reconciled to Him. And we also want you to understand that God does have some very specific uh, directions, some guidance, some principles that will help your marriage succeed. And those principles are contained in the Word of God. And we've pulled those together so that you can look at them and understand them a little more easily. And if you'll give us a call, at 877-431-7887 and 416-431-0700. We'll get this little teaching booklet out to you. It's called Love and Marriage. It's anchored to the scriptures. It has these foundational principles and practices that will help your marriage become everything that God wants it to be. But the key, as I said just a, a moment ago, is that you need to be reconciled first to God in Jesus Christ. And as you get closer to Christ, what you'll find is that each of you become closer to one another. It's like that triangle shape. As you move up toward God, as you move up the arms of that triangle, you'll find the distance between you will begin to decrease dramatically. So give us a call, 877-431-7887 and 416-431-0700. When marriages are in trouble, it can be a dark and frightening time. And we want you to know that we're here to pray with you and to assist you in any way we can. So please call us. Well, Chuck Lowry was a lonely boy who always longed for his dad's attention. Once Chuck had children of his own, he spent time with them, but the time was spent scoring drugs. I would wake up in the morning looking for a needle to stick in my arm, and I'd go to bed at night sticking needles in my arm. I'd become a straight-out junkie. That's all I wanted to do was just shoot up cocaine. It seemed like my whole life that I was on some kind of a suicide mission. Chuck Lowry wanted to put an end to the pain he'd wrestled with since he was a child. When his parents divorced, he was bounced back and forth between both homes. I spent a lot of time alone by myself, and I had built up a whole lot of anger because of not having nobody there. Hungry for attention, Chuck turned to his uncle, a known drug dealer. How old were you when you started doing drugs with your uncle? I was about 11 years old when I started uh, snorting lines of cocaine. I stayed high most of the time. It just took away the pain. I went from selling marijuana to selling acid and cocaine and crystal and whatever you wanted, I had it. Chuck spent most of his adult life in and out of jail on drug-related charges. After he met and married Tara, his addiction to crack cocaine threatened to destroy his family. It was like I depended more on cocaine than I did on food to live. That's what I hunted for every day of the week. How did your addiction affect your wife and your kids? It had me to where I wasn't being a father. I wasn't being a husband. I would go to work and take whole paychecks and just stay gone for weekends at a time, riding around in a car, smoking dope. Chuck remembers driving to crack houses in this neighborhood to hustle for drugs. Many times, with his children in the back seat. When my dad was on drugs, it made me feel like I was missing out on part of life because the only time he spent time with us is when he was 
doing the drugs, and he got, he always got me and my brother to ride with him. Tara took the children to church every week and encouraged them to pray for their dad. I just prayed and prayed and prayed, staying in on the Word of God, just praying and believing for God to deliver him from the drugs. It was a struggle. After five years together, Tara was ready to walk out the door. It got to the point where I just wanted to, you know, up and just leave. I said, I had enough and enough's enough. I remember the look in her eye. I knew she can't, she's not going to take this much longer. I knew that what I was doing wasn't right. I knew that something had to change. And uh, I didn't know how to change it. The next morning, after spending all night getting high, Chuck went to church, desperate to hear from God. I pulled up from the church, and I remember my wife was always telling me about, you know, being filled with the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. And I didn't really believe in it. I said, well, God, I said, if this is true, if there's something about this, then you need to let me know today. Because if something don't change today, then I won't be back and I walked through the doors. The pastor started speaking about feeling alone and about Jesus being there for you no matter what you're going through and Jesus paying the price for you. And it seemed like everything he spoke about was speaking right to me. He called an altar call for people to come to the front. It was like something said, you need to be there. And when I walked up there and kneeled down, pastor walked over and a couple of them and walked over. And I remember them laying hands on me and praying with me. And I started crying. And it was a cry to where I actually felt happy. It felt like everything in the world just got calm. Everything just got lifted. I accepted Jesus into my heart right then and there. And I got up feeling relieved. I knew it was real when I left there. You know, I knew that I'd been filled with the Holy Spirit. I knew that it was real. And I knew that my life would never be the same again. And it hadn't been the same again since then. Chuck says the power of God set him free from his 30-year drug addiction. God delivered me from all of it. and. He did it without any pains, without, I mean, he healed me, he delivered me, and I can't never thank him enough for that. The more I opened up his word and read, the more I knew that, yeah, I have been forgiven, that I've got a new slate, and that I'm a new person. God has changed our lives tremendously. You know, we come to church, and we have Bible studies. It's so much better. I don't have to worry about him hitting them streets at nighttime, you know. He's home with us, he provides. He's a great husband and a father. I've seen God change my dad because now he plays sports with us. He brings us to church and everywhere. I love my dad so much I would do anything in the world for him. I know that no matter what I've done, no matter what mistakes I made, that God loves me and that he's there, you know, and that I can always go to him and he accepts me with open arms. Jesus Christ really did die on that cross for all of our sins. He didn't just pick a certain few. He died for everybody's sins. No matter what you've done, no matter what you're going through, Jesus Christ died and shed his blood to wash all that away. And all he's doing is waiting on you to come to him. Sometimes in my ministry to people, I'll, I'll have someone who will say to me, you know, Dave, it's my life. If I want to ruin it, that's up to me. Nobody else is going to be impacted. You know, it's, it's my thing. And if I want to do what I want to do, I'm going to do it. The reality is that's not true. You don't ever have a life and live a life without impacting other people. And one of the tragedies about sin is that while sin can destroy your life, 
it also, through you, can destroy the lives of others. And that's particularly true in family relationships. When a dad or a mom are not living uh, for Christ and in Christ, when they're living lives that essentially are self-destructive in nature, there are all kinds of other people around them, particularly the children, that are impacted in a negative way. As you've watched this today, it may well be that the Holy Spirit, you felt something within you. It's what we call conviction, a deep, deep sense of awareness of what you've done, and you may be overwhelmed by that, realizing that not only are you on a path to destruction, but you've basically pushed your kids, your children, down that same path, and you're wondering, is it too late? We're here to tell you today, good news, it's not too late. You can turn around at this very moment. Your life can be transformed. You can become a new creature. And from this moment on, through faith in Jesus Christ, you can live a life that not only will bring you into an eternal relationship with Christ, but have an influence then that can help your children be pointed in the right direction as well. Are you ready to do that? Are you ready to admit the fact that you don't live unto yourself? Are you willing to recognize the fact that your life on this destructive path has a negative influence on others? If so, then all you need to do is to turn and look to your Heavenly Father and say, God, I'm sorry. Can you say that right now? God, I'm so sorry. I had no idea what I was doing. Please forgive me. And Father, as people are, are turning with your help to you, by the conviction that they feel in the Holy Spirit, would you minister peace to them? They're confessing their sins, and your word says that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. A new day awaits you if you've prayed that prayer. A new day of transformation, not just for you, but for all that your life will touch from this moment on. If you'll give us a call at 877-431-7887 or 416-431-0700, tell us that you've prayed that prayer. Our prayer warriors will pray with you. They'll give you some good counsel about the next steps you need to take. And then we will send to you some teaching material. It's called A New Day, based on the scriptures that we believe will transform not only your life, but all of the lives that you influence. Call us right now. Don't wait another second. Well, still to come, he was in perfect health, or so he thought. And as I was walking out the door, I grabbed my chest and I fell to the ground. He was unresponsive, not breathing, and had no heart rate at all. Basically, he was dead when we found him. See how this man experienced a miracle within 15 minutes. Dale Lindstrom was a fit guy who enjoyed working on home improvement projects. And like many men, Dale seldom saw a doctor until the day he went shopping for a tool, and listen to this, dropped dead. Dale Lindstrom was in perfect health. His wife, Rita, says he hardly would get a cold. It appears that Dale's been strong throughout his life. Uh, he didn't go to doctors. Uh, he ate what he wanted to. He slept well, worked hard. That is until August 5th, 2008. Dale had gone to a hardware store to buy a tool he needed to finish up a remodeling project, but he never made it home. As I was walking out the door of the store, I remember nothing else. Suddenly, I was told later that I grabbed my chest and I fell to the ground somewhere in that parking lot. Dell had a heart attack. A retired nurse was nearby and started CPR. Paramedics arrived eight minutes later. We pulled in to find Dale, uh, full cardiac arrest, laying in the parking lot. He was unresponsive, not breathing, and had no heart rate at all. Basically, he was dead when we found him and started to resuscitate him. We shocked him a total of uh, three times, got him in the back of the ambulance, and uh, started the hospital. Rita's sister came by to tell her the news. They immediately drove to the hospital and prayed. And I said, Jesus, out loud, you got to go first. I can't do this. 
Dale was rushed to surgery where doctors began to repair the damage to his heart. He had been without proper circulation to his heart and brain for nearly eight minutes. Dr. Vilbig was the cardiologist in charge. He had experienced uh, what's called sudden cardiac death. And this is where the heart rhythm suddenly becomes very rapid and irregular and the heart doesn't pump any blood. And so the person drops dead at that point. Doctors discovered that one of his major arteries, also called the Widowmaker, was 90% blocked. Doctors opened it with a stent and restored blood flow. A blockage in that artery early on is euphemistically called a Widowmaker because people don't survive that if something isn't done properly. Um, too much heart muscle is lost. After surgery, doctors told Rita that while the procedure was successful, Dale was still in critical condition. He remained on life support throughout the night. He said, in all my surgeries, I've only had one survivor of this nature, and there was brain issues, and your husband will have brain damage. Rita asked her family to pray a very specific prayer. Will you agree with me that God will take him in glory, or raise him up in glory, but deliver us from this evil? Fifteen minutes later, she went back to his room, and something miraculous happened. He didn't know anything. He looked straight to me like this. And I looked at him and I said, Dale, Dale honey, we love, we love you. you. And he looked at each one of us in the room like, why are you here? I ran out and I got the doctor and I said, he's okay. Nothing's wrong. Within one day, he was taken off of life support and soon he was talking. What's more, tests revealed no neurological damage. He was totally intelligent. One of his friends came to visit him. He had a two-hour Bible study with him. Dale was discharged from the hospital on Saturday, just four days after his heart attack completely healed. I know Dale's recovery was an absolute, instantaneous miracle. That's why our minds are blown. Dr. Vilbig recently spoke with Dale. He says statistically the odds were stacked against him for a complete recovery. Most of the people don't even make it to the hospital. They die at home in their sleep. So he really has recovered completely. Dale and Rita have been married for 44 years. Every moment they spend together is much sweeter. I felt like I was just picking up where I'd left off in the sense of our relationship and the grace of God. We've enjoyed a whole lot more love and appreciation for every breath. Just that he's there and I can just hold his hand and look at his face and he can talk to me. Dale doesn't remember anything of his miraculous survival. All he knows is that God is a merciful God and that miracles still happen. The rest of my life, I will live in the wonder of that. And we will know whether I can explain it or not, I know my God had mercy on me and he's a merciful God. He delights in mercy and he will do it for you. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, life can be full of surprises, and a lot of them aren't good, right, George? I mean, so often we, we think we've got it made, we understand uh, what our schedule is. Uh, this guy had no indication at all that he had any health problems, and then he goes to buy a tool and ends up facing eternity. Incredible. Wow. It is. Absolutely incredible. And things can just come on us immediately, and and we just don't know. We don't know. That's why we have to put our confidence and our trust for our future in God's hands. That's a good word. In God's hands. We have people who call us because they believe that God can be trusted for the future. And you have some of the prayer requests that have come in recently here. I I do. I have a list of them. I'll read a few uh, just to... uh, so we can uh, grab a hold of them. Matthew called from Vancouver and was calling for healing of arthritis in his knees and also Mm -hmm. for a financial breakthrough. Two things that he's really believing for. A lady from Sundry, Alberta. It's a great place, by the way. Uh, Healing of tumors and uh, also joint and muscle pain and stiffness in her body. And then uh, there was a, a person, Victoria, from, uh, from Manitoba, from Birch River, Manitoba, called for healing of colon cancer. Cancer mm. is such an insidious really thing is, wow. in our society today. And then uh, just a couple more. I'll just uh, read um, uh, a lady from Brampton, Ontario. Salvation for her husband, for her family. God's desire is for wow. family salvation. And uh, a lady from Ottawa needs a full-time job. 
just it's those that that mm -hmm. time of uh, uh, of our lives that it seems so often. And then there's another lady that uh, is from Fort Erie, Ontario, and I, I actually know this lady, and uh, so I won't mention her name, but she called and said, "Pray for me for deliverance from drugs and mm -hmm. alcohol." You know, there's some desperate things that are are, are right. facing people's lives today, but she's reaching out in the right place. Amen. A couple Amen. more just quickly, one from Quebec for family salvation. And then there was Sharon that called from St. John, New Brunswick and said, healing of heart problems. You know, it's uh, the Bible says that in the last days that men's heart will fail them wow. for fear of what's coming. But there are some real physical things that really attack our physical body as well. But God is still in the business of doing miracles That's today. Right. Yes. And that, that promise that we started the show with uh, from Isaiah, that for the Lord will be your everlasting light. Yes. Let's take a minute and pray, George. Please yeah, pray yeah, for yeah. these needs. Mm. Father, I just thank mm. you that these that I've read are just a representation of the many people that have called in and said, will you agree with me? Will you come into agreement mm. regarding the word of God in my life and the promises that Jesus has already made on my behalf and what he's fulfilled on my behalf? So, Lord, we do come into agreement today yes, with those that have uh, called into us, but also those that are viewing today. Mm. You might be there today and just you, you have this need that's so mm. desperate in your life. I want you to know God has not forgotten about you. He hasn't forsaken you. And you, we can put our confidence and trust in him, knowing that he is a God that not only hears our prayers, but he answers our prayers. Yes, he God. makes the difference that seemingly no one else could make in those impossible times. God is there and transforms our lives, transforms our Thank circumstances. You, I want to encourage you today. There's hope for you. Reach out. Grab a hold of his hand, recognizing that he loves you with an everlasting love. So, Father, we thank you for meeting needs and transforming lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. George. Amen. You know, this, this concept of expectant faith hmm. and believing that God has something for us is so critically important. And if you'll call us at 877-431-7887 and 416-431-0700, we have some teaching materials on this law of expectation that God can be trusted, that we can expect him to do exceeding abundantly above all that we would ask or think. And we also want to remind you that coming up here a little bit later in April will be our, our season of prayer and intercession. And so if you've received that mailing from us, please get your prayer requests back to us. And George, uh, coming up here just uh, very, very shortly is Mission Fest Toronto, April 1 and 2, uh, Global Kingdom Ministries in Scarborough. We want to encourage people to be a part of that and to participate. You can get more information on that uh, at our website. I'm going to be there. Come and say hello. Yes, come and say hello to George. God bless you. We'll see you next time on Canadian Edition. Family, home, love. Whether you're newlywed or have been married for years, we all need help to build a healthy, happy home. Call or write the 700 Club to find lasting answers for your marriage. For more information, or if you'd like to help continue the ministry of Canadian Edition, please write to us with your gift today. Our address is CBA Post Office Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S4T4. Become a 700 Club partner and write today.